Now to, to think about this, we're going to construct an amortization table, which is a little bit different than a standard amortization table, just so we can get a good feel for this. This might be going a little bit overboard. You don't have to construct an amortization table uh, all, all the time, but it's useful to get an idea of, of what's happening. So we're gonna go to Excel, construct our amortization schedule. We'll do it fairly quickly since this is not an Excel course. Okay, so I'm gonna put the data on the left-hand side. So we have the loan balance, the months, we'll say, uh, months of the loan, which could be the periods, because it's gonna be less than a year. We'll say the rate that we're gonna have, and then the payments that we're gonna make. Let's format the entire worksheet now. I'm gonna put my cursor on the triangle and put my ground line or baseline formatting, the whole sheet selected, right clicking on it, formatting the selected sheet. Then I'm gonna go down to currency. I usually go to bracketed red numbers for negatives, get rid of the dollar sign. And uh, let's keep the decimals. We'll keep the decimals in place and say, okay. And then I'm gonna make it bold so that hopefully that stands out when we're doing the recording. Notice I put all this stuff on line five instead of line one, which is where I wanted it. So I'm just gonna delete rows one to four, selecting those rows, right-clicking and just delete those. So we've got the information up on A1 to start with because that makes sense. Okay, so then I'm gonna say that the loan is for 5,000. That's what we took the loan out when we financed our equipment for. And let's say it was just for a three month loan. We're just gonna make it a small loan because I wanna make the numbers a little bit more significant uh, for our adjusting entry. I'm also gonna make the interest rate quite high because I wanna make it significant for our, our accrual entry here. So I'm gonna say percent. And then the payment, I'll do a calculation for the payment just to show you how you can calculate the payment. Oftentimes when financing the equipment, they would give you the calculation of the payment but not by, might not be so clear about the rate, for example, or, uh, uh, or you know, you could back into the, any of these other two items if you knew the payment amount. And so, whenever you're dealing with a loan person, the financing department, you probably want to make sure that you're thinking through things yourself, right? And don't, and 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 so that you fully understand all the components that are involved, because those finance departments cannot can be a little, uh, little, little scammy sometimes. So in any case, so I'm gonna say negative PMT, that's the payment calculation. We're gonna pick up the rate, which is gonna be up one, that's gonna be B3, that's a rate for a yearly rate. We're gonna imagine that's a yearly rate, right? Which is normally what people talk in when they think about rates. Yearly rates, I gotta break it down to divided by 12, a monthly rate, comma, the number of periods is just three. That is in months now, so I don't need to divide by 12. That's not three years, three months. So now the rate is tied out to the same period structure as the number of as the payments, comma, the present value, that is gonna be the 500. And that's all we really need to calculate the payment. If I didn't have a negative and I put an equal instead, it would be a positive, it would be a negative number when I finish it so this flips the sign for me it's probably not the most proper way to do it you put the negative inside the formula but that is the easiest way to do it i find so i'm going to do that and then we got that and so i'm going to close up 